Hello everyone, I'm Sophia Pan from the Faculty of Arts and Humanities and this presentation is for the class called Moral and Ethical Themes in Literature and you might wonder what kind of literature I want to share with you, right? Okay, alright, this is the title, The Clay Marble. As you can see the, by the cover of this book. There are two girls playing with each other. Okay, let us furthermore explore about this literature. Alright, before that, we will um, let us first see the whole contents, the whole presentation that I will cover. And of course, I will tell you or introduce you about the author, the work, the genre, and the period. And then I will tell you about the short, the short summary of the book. And then there are some of the identified issues that I found. And also I will show you about my personal reaction. And in the same time, I will uh, tell you how can I apply those ethics and moral values into my life. Let us see about the book infor information. And yes, this book is entitled The Clay Marble. You might wonder, The Clay Marble, what does it mean? It was written by Ming Feng Ho. It sounds more like Chinese. Yes, she is Chinese. And the book, the number of the book is 168 pages and it was published in 1992. And the type of the book or the genre of the book is the novel. Is that novel or we can say it as historical, historical fiction because it, um, included some of the history in the time, in the period of Cambodia in 1980s, in the early 19, uh, 1980s. All right, let us know about the other two. Oh, wait. And yes, the other was born in Burma. She was a Chinese, but she was born in Burma and she was raised in Thailand and Singapore. And she can speak three languages, which are Chinese, Thai and English, of course. And then she moved to the United States to pursue her education at Cornwall University. And this is very interesting because she's, she, she, she said when I read about her, her life, um, there are two reasons that she, that made her to write the book. First one is to combat homesickness, uh, while studying in USA because you know, like all her lifetime or her young, uh, her childhood, she was raised in uh, Asia and suddenly she moved to, you know, to the United States. Of course, she was homesick and yes, she write, she write, she wrote some books to combat her homesickness. And also the second thing is that she wanted to clarify the misunderstanding by writing based on her own experience in Asia. Of course, in, in America, in the United States, you know, some people, they might get uh, less information about how Asian experience during the time of crisis. And of course, so she, since she was, she experienced there, you know, she was in Asia, of course. She knew a lot about Asia and she wanted to write this book to, you know, to clarify, to explain the, the facts that she have experienced in Asia. Her first, uh, two books before she write this book, she accomplished the first two books, which are, uh, were Sing to the Dawn and Rise Without Rain. Of course, these two books also about Asia also. And because of her work, she received first prize from the Council of Interracial Books for Children. And in 80, in 1980, you know, she worked as a nutritionist with, with an international organization at the Cambodian border, where there were thousands and thousands of refugees had fled. Yes, she was there. She was there to see all those situations, all the struggles that Cambodian have had experienced. Alright, as I have mentioned um, about this book, the, it was written based on the situation revealing about the struggling period of Cambodia during the mid 1970 something. And it is a historical fiction or we can say it's a novel. 
it's a novel about the period of Cambodia was, that was ruled by the Khmer Rouge. Alright, let us see the important characters inside the story. Um, the, the main character is Dara. She was 12 years old and then her friend, her close friend, Jantu, and then her other friend, which Chne. You know, Chne is, was exactly the same age as Dara and Jantu, I think she is a bit, um, younger, maybe one year or two years younger. But you know, these two friends, the girls, these two girls are very close to each other, but this boy, I mean, at the first time, at the first start of the story, that she likes to bully a lot, and then he suddenly changed his character at the end of the story. There, and there are many other characters, but you know, these two, these two, three characters, these two, these three characters are very important. And the setting of this uh, story is, of course, in in Cambodia. And as you can see in the picture, the time during that time, you know. It's very hard for them. It's very painful for the people because it's like killing period. All right, let us go to the short summary of the story. Um, as you can see the text, but it's it's long, but I will tell you like a very very short one. Like Dara, she was 12 years old, and you know that time Cambodian like faced a, a struggling period, which is um you know the war within the country and then they have the, the family of Dara they had to flee to the refugee camp and then they find a peaceful life there because they had food they have shelter and they have friends they have like um you know friendly family there so they face a a good a good time a good time there but suddenly there was a a war again and they bombed the entire village, the entire camp, and you know the family has to you know, separate, have to scatter everywhere to survive. And Dara and Jantu, you know her close friend, um, the the family they they were separated, and in order to you know encourage each other, they they make each other a marble clay because Jantu believed that this marble clay can you know can protect them to find their family and then they can gather the family again and they Jantu made Dara a, a nice and beautiful marble clay and told told Dara that okay this marble clay will protect you wherever you go and the sad sad story about this is that um Jantu she got shot from yes she got shot because they thought that Chanto was the enemy. Actually, she is not. She was while she was looking for her family. Um, she got she got shot, and Dara was very disappointed because the the one that uh, shot Chanto was her own brother. Oh, because her brother was a, a soldier, so he shot without thinking that you know Chanto actually is is a close friend of her uh, of Dara. And the story was ended like um, Dara, you know, she was looking for her family, but like she could not find anyone. And then like Chne, like her enemy, suddenly became so compassionate on her, and he were like work so hard, like steal the food, and you know give give Dara shelter, and they both of them they became close friends. And there is one interesting thing that I want to share with you, which is uh, survival. You know, it's very important because that time, you know, you have to depend on yourself. No, you cannot depend on others. You cannot trust others during that time because it, you know, it's very cool and dangerous situation. So in order to survive, you have to depend on yourself. Yes, so survival is very important. And the ethical issues, there are... A few ethical issues that I can find in the story. Here, as you can see, the first uh, thing is like bullying. At the first start of the story, I, as I've mentioned, Chne like they bully the two girls. Whenever they play together, they make toys, they make clay. Like Chne always like destroy, you know, destroy their clay still. And the second one is lying. Um, like Chantu, like she made a clay out of 
yeah, she made a marble clay and gave it to Dara and lied that this marble clay is is magic and can protect you wherever you go, can give you the courage, the power or something. So it's lying. Actually, it's not. The, mar the marble clay is just a marble clay. And then the killing, you know, in the time, you know, they kill all the innocents, they kill all the educated people, the bomb, the Khmer Rouge, they kill all the, those people, especially those who are educated, they will kill all, they will, you know, get rid of all of them. And the fourth thing is stealing. This is stealing here, I mean the stealing of, of food, because, you know, in order to survive, you have to eat, you have to have, you have to drink, so, rice during that time rice and water is very important you know in order to survive you have to steal something from people you know i really really love to read this story the first time that i read you know i almost it's not almost that i got teared on my eyes already you know when it, when we imagine the situation during that time and also this story is a novel but i don't think it's a novel at all it's like it's a it's um it's real during the time like many many thousands of families they get scattered they get separated and you know and i love the author how the author developed the the pictures in the mind of readers you know her simple word but you know we can understand we can imagine the real situation during the time and the cruel situations that the Khmer Rouge have had killed those innocent people yes and you know this story is heartbroken. It's heartbreaking. And at the first start of the story, you know, it's a bit, it sounds boring because the author described many, many things about the simple life of, of people. But as I understood, you know, she had her purpose in, in, you know, making the start uh, a bit boring because it sounded like a simple life of people in the camp, in the field. Like planting rice, growing something, yeah, you know, it, the life there is very simple, but her, that the author has her purpose, because during that time, you know, they want a peaceful life, they want a simple life, people, people, during that time, they want just a peaceful life, just a simple life they want to live, so, that's why they, the, the author mentioned about all those simple lives, because people, you know, it's hard to for them to find a peaceful life during that that period. And next thing is, um, is that I love the other's language inside the story, since she is Asian. So her words usage inside the story is not very hard. It's very easy to understand and comprehend. Okay, I found three important moral values. And of course, it's very important to my life as well. Well, the first one is courage. Learn to be confident and self-independent. You know, in order to have the courage, remember that the two the two girls they made each other marble clay to represent that the marble clay is the things that they can give courage. So I love I love this like marble clay, which give uh, courage to those girls that they can a twelve years old girl, but you know. They deserves all those situations, all those struggling. So it's really encouraging story, and it really encouraged me to, you know, be a powerful girl. You know, although you are still in a just young age, but we can do whatever we want. We can shape, we can mold our life, and uh, whatever we want it to be. Like how the, the marble clay, you know, we can shape, and like how we can shape our life as well. And the second thing is friendship. They are very supportive. The, the three friends they are were uh, very supportive although Chanto was like um she got shot and died but then the the Chne, uh suddenly he became friends with um with Dara and and she and they you know became close friends they support each other in the time of crisis and the third thing is the past is pain, painful but it helps you to learn something learn to be strong learn to value things and not to waste why i say that um because you know since we reflect the past by now you know when i whenever i eat i try to finish all the food not to waste food because i will 
think about during that time that people are trying hard to survive, but they cannot find anything to eat. But now we have something to eat, but then why to waste food? So this is what I should apply to my life. I learn not to waste food. Like I have to finish all the rice. Like my parents, they also teach me how uh, not to waste food. Like eat what you have and try to eat like, just enough, like not too much. And think about the other children who like trying hard to survive, but they cannot find anything to eat or drink. So this is the end of the presentation, and I hope you um, got this idea. And yes, I'm done. And here's the references that I've got from my for this presentation, and also some of the pictures are from uh, the Google. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.